Ladies and gentlemen in this Red Gaming Center Comp video, we're going to be looking at the benchmarks for the GTX 1060. These are official benchmarks that NVIDIA provide to reviewers, we'll get to that in a second, which compare the card against the RX 480 and the last generation card, the GTX 960, which of course the 1060 is set to replace. So if you're unfamiliar with these benchmarks and why they exist, essentially benchmarks from NVIDIA, AMD or what have you are sent to reviewers to basically say, hey, this is how we believe the card should perform with these games. So it's A, an indication of what they believe the card's capable of. For example, let's say that they're testing, oh, I don't know, a GTX 950. You're, they're obviously going to not be running the game at 1440p, so it's an indication of what they believe the target market and the target settings are, but it also serves as a point of comparison for you so that you can see whether the card's working correctly in your system, for example, driver revisions or hardware conflicts, that type of thing. Essentially, you don't necessarily want to take their numbers as gospel. It's always good to have them as a point of reference only, um, especially when it comes to the performance of their competitors' cards, because generally speaking, they're going to choose the best case scenarios for their particular GPU versus, well, you know, theirs. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about these um, benchmarks, and then we're going to have a look at a couple of benchmarks I've taken on my own RX480. It's kind of handy because I'm doing a review anyway, so I've already got some of these benchmarks lying around um, for various games, including Ash of the Singularity, Tomb Raider, and a few others. And I'm going to give my opinions on them. So I'm going to read out some of the performance results. I'm going to round them up or down um, based upon, you know, how close they are to a certain number because I don't think the point ones are going to make the difference. But anyway, uh, they're on screen anywho. So, Ash of the Singularity, 34 frames a second versus 36 frames a second, a 5% difference. I'm going to be focusing on 1080p results, but you can see the 1440p anyway. Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, 1080p with 2 times SSAA, 40, uh, 42 frames a second with 51 on the GTX 1060. Um, we've got Grand Theft Auto 5, another popular one, 45 frames a second versus 60 frames a second. Metro Last Light, 46 versus 56, that's 1080p once again with 2 times SAAA. Middle of Earth, 79.9 frames a second, 80 frames a second versus 89 frames a second, 11% difference in performance. And the one which NVIDIA feel that they're basically neck and neck with AMD, although did manage to get a 1% difference, is 52.6 for the RX 480 versus 53.1 for the GTX 1060. Of course, both cards ruffle stomp the GTX 960, which is fair enough. I mean, obviously, they're A, they're a generation later, and B, they're considerably more expensive now. And the Steam VR performance test also pits the... GTX 1060 a couple of points higher. Now, before we start talking about my opinions for the benchmarks, there are a couple of small caveats that I want to go through. Firstly, don't take these results of the GTX 1060 as the exact number. And I'll tell you why, because essentially we don't know certain testing criteria, for example, all of the settings they were using uh, with their system. We don't know the CPU, we don't know the memory configurations and that type of thing. The second is, well, it's always good to have official results. For example, it's very easy for um, them to have very <laughs> aggressive boosting. <laughs> Let's go with aggressive boosting, shall we? Um, and we don't know, for example, what they were doing in the in the labs. And I'm not saying that there was anything hinky going on, I'm not accusing NVIDIA or any company of doing that, but they are always going to choose the cards, uh, sorry, the best possible results, and they may run those results 15 times over and get the best possible result for the GTX 1060. I'm not saying they do, I'm just giving you an example of how, you know, always wait for official results. But we're going to take NVIDIA on the GTX 1060 on its word for this particular video because, well... We can't do anything else at the end of the day. Um, and we're going to have a look at some performance results from my particular reviews and give my opinions regardless. 
Unfortunately, we can't test the GTX 1060 results simply because the card isn't out yet, but what we can do is take a look at the results of the RX 480 and see if it, Nvidia's claim of the lead of the GTX 1060 is accurate. Now, of course, we will be testing the GTX 1060 when it is finally released, uh, but until then, at least we can use this for some food for thought. So, what we did is we matched the... Um, graphical settings that NVIDIA are telling us that they're utilizing through their benchmarks and if we were to take a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider for example the overall score that we managed to achieve on the benchmark system that you saw was 47 frames a second compared to the 41.5 of their RX 480 uh, if we were to switch things over to Metro Last Light um, we managed to achieve 46 frames a second which I'm sorry, they managed to achieve 46 frames a second, while we managed to achieve uh, around 48 frames a second, so pretty much within the margin of error. Um, if we were to move over to Witcher, Wild Hunt, now I'm not sure whether Hairworks was used, because if Hairworks was used, the scores didn't seem to match up when we were testing it. Perhaps it was the area that they were using, but anyway... Um, they managed to get around 47 frames per second with their RX 480, but we rarely noticed it dip below, let's say, the high 50s. And finally, Shadow of Mordor. So, of course, 1080p once again. Uh, they achieved 79.9, which is actually ever so slightly higher than what we managed to get with our benchmark run, which is 76, which is once again within the margin of error. So, the hinky results for me are Witcher and... Tomb Raider. Now I could go for a whole bunch more results but ultimately it seems a bit pointless to do loads and loads of benchmarking since the cards aren't actually out yet and I want to compare the two cards apples for apples in other words in test conditions that we can really control and make sure that we're running the same sections. So what does it actually mean for the uh, GTX 1060? Well, let's ignore the fact of one card being 5 or 10% faster for a moment and say that it's really good that there's a competitor for the RX 480. What I don't want is for one vendor to have a monopoly in one part of the market because it's not good for us as customers. Because let's say for the sake of argument that you own a GTX 970 that happened to go by the wayside in a couple of months' time and you own a G-Sync monitor, well, you don't want your only options to either be a used GTX 970 or possibly a 980 or something like that, assuming the supplies haven't dried up by then, or to pinch, to bite the bullet, excuse me, and have to go and buy a GTX 1070. At least you have the option of a 1060 if that is enough for your gaming needs. And honestly, it's only good for us as customers. It may force AMD to reduce their pricing, it may force a price war in general, or it may force both companies to release drivers which are going to be highly optimized, and that's good for us. It means that both vendors are going to provide drivers which are the best possible for new game releases, whether that's Doom. Uh, we tested the Vulcan performance, of course, on the RX 480 versus OpenGL just yesterday, so do check out that video if you want. I'll leave a link in the video description. And we noticed a massive performance in frame rate, which is absolutely fantastic. And I think the competition from NVIDIA has really helped AMD step up their drivers, and obviously the RX 480 has really helped to push down the price, most likely, of the GTX 1060. With all of that said, I still have some concerns about the GTX 1060. Primarily, I'm not convinced 6GB of RAM in the future is going to be enough, but then again, it is a mid-range card, and because there is no SLI capability, another black mark against it, there is that concern, but the card is probably highly overclockable. I mean, we have already heard stories of it being pushed over to gigahertz without too much problem. And that is a really good thing for us, because it might mean that this card can easily compete with a 980, possibly even if you're using an insane enough cooling solution, uh, encroach on the 980 Ti territory. Which, once again, for the price point of these GPUs, bear in mind that the... RX 480 is around 230, the GTX 1060, assuming you don't want the Founders Edition, is going to be about 250. It's a lot of gaming performance, and it's going to absolutely obliterate 1080p for some time. And that's a good thing for us, because if you're a PC gamer, I don't care whether you're on Camp Green, Camp Red, Camp I Just Want the Best Performance, it's a good thing because with the next generation of uh, systems already here, and of course with their upgrades, the Scorpio and the Neo, we're probably going to see better 
uh, textures, we're going to see bigger textures, we're going to see better levels of uh, graphical fidelity because developers feel that they can not only utilize that for high-end PCs but they can transfer their work to the next step up consoles I guess. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of food for thought for me. I'm really bloody looking forward to getting my hands on the GTX 1060 for testing. Um, so yeah, bear with us. There is still the GTX 1070 review that we're going to be having up soon. The RX 480 review is almost done. I've done the main body of the benchmarking and the text, which is good. I've taken all the principal photography and most of the videos so i just have a few more last tests to do and some overclocking results so i'm pretty happy but anyway guys hopefully you've enjoyed the video uh normal stuff if you like the video feel free to like the you know video uh subscribe if you want more uh feel free to share it in all of the usual places like the reddits and the neo gaffs and all of the other awesome communities out there and for now i'm gonna get going because i've got a lot of benchmark editing to do all right take care of yourselves have a good one bye